Hey everybody, Bobby, I'm back for another video. And the topic of discussion today is mash temperatures and how to actually achieve the temperature that you're shooting for based on a recipe or something or other. So it's not really that critical to hit it perfectly every time, of course. You can adjust as you uh, find it necessary. But for the most part, I think a lot of people are struggling with really hitting their mash temperatures uh, the f exactly what they wanted to hit the first time and uh, hopefully this video is going to help you out a little bit. The first thing to discuss is really what are the factors at work here and you know there's a couple different things that we need to talk about. One is obviously the strike temperature, um, the temperature of your strike water I should say, um, that you're mixing with your grain and the other is how much grain you're using and at what temperature the grain sits at. So if it's winter time in the northeast like it is here and I have the grain sitting out in my garage, it's going to be 40 degrees when I, when I mill it and mix it with the strike water. If it's summertime, it's 95 degrees in here, obviously that's a big factor as well. Uh, it's going to pull a lot less heat out of that strike water in that situation. And the third one, and the most complicated, is the makeup of your mash vessel. Now there's, uh, you know, unlimited numbers of different kinds of uh, mash containers you can use. But by far the, uh, the most common ones are like converted beverage coolers like igloos uh, and um, Coleman Extremes and stuff like that. And of course uh, metal vessels like uh, brew kettles or converted kegs. And those are probably the, the most two common uh, mashing vessels. And of course they're, they have completely different thermal characteristics as far as how much heat they're going to pull out. You know the vessel itself, um, you could also call that the heat capacity. And then there's also how well it holds on to the heat once it has it. In other words, how, how much is it going to resist having the heat of the mash move out into the ambient environment? Certainly the easiest way to nail that mash temperature every time is to use software uh, that is well set up and well written, but also that has been programmed by the brewer as to what the thermal properties of your equipment or your vessels is. So it's, it's important uh, when you're using this software to make sure it has the proper uh, information and proper data so that it knows how to calculate the temperature more accurately in your brew house, not just some generic, um, you know, common model. You really do have to do this yourself and tell it, tell it the right numbers. So the process is called calibration, okay? It's making sure that the, uh, your tool has, you know, the most accurate information. So I'm going to do a few different um, calibration steps in my brew house today. The first is I'm going to find out what the effective BTU of my burners are. So that'll tell me and the software how long it should take to heat a certain volume of water for my brew day, just so I can plan out how long the brew day is going to take. Okay, and after that, we're going to put some hot water into the mash tun and we're going to measure the temperature over a certain amount of time. And that's going to tell the software two different things. One is um, the initial heat loss that it experiences is going to be uh, uh, telling the software what the heat capacity of that vessel is. In other words, how much heat does that vessel want to take for itself um, before it equalizes and is happy. And then uh, a much later event is going to be uh, measuring what the heat transfer coefficient is, is the fancy term that Beer Tools Pro uh, writers used, but for the most part, it's just going to say how much heat will that vessel give up to the ambient environment over a certain amount of time. So I'm going to get started right now. So the first thing you need to do is note how much volume you have in there. And for my calibration right now, I'm going to do, I have eight gallons. I have eight gallons in the hot liquor tank. So then I back off until it's more quiet. I don't hear air and I don't see the, the uh, flames jumping off the tips. So I'd consider that maximum output. And that's where I'd run it on brew day. So for now I have um, my re remote probe thermometer. Okay, so it's at 69. As soon as it hits 70, I'm going to start the timer and see how long it takes to hit the 88 degree uh, or the 18 degree delta. Okay, there's 70. There, we're at 87 and 
we're coming up on six minutes. It's probably gonna be six minutes. All right. All right, you can see that the temperature rise is not linear at all. So, uh, and right now I'm recirculating that hot water through my hoses and through my pump. And the reason I'm doing that is just so that I can um, basically preheat that, warm everything up so that when I start pumping this into my mash tun, it doesn't lose heat on the way there. And I'm going to wait until this gets to 160 degrees and then I'm going to put it into my mash tun. I recently put a one inch mineral wool uh, blanket around the mash tun and wrapped it with some aluminum sheeting uh, for protection because this stuff is very delicate. Um, but McMaster Car has a two, two foot by four foot sheet of this stuff for like seven dollars so it's dirt cheap and I can actually direct fire this mash tun now without taking the insulation off like I had to when I had Reflectix. So this is uh, one of the reasons why I'm recalibrating uh, the information in Beer Tools Pro because I don't know how this is going to react. Um, it's going to be different than Reflectix. So. And now is also a great time to uh, observe how much dead space you have in the liquor tank. In other words, how much of the water you're going to leave behind when you drain this 100%. I started the 5 minute timer uh, when I had 4 gallons in, in the ton. I, I could have started it as soon as I started pumping. It really doesn't matter. I mean, 5 minutes is relatively arbitrary. And it's really just um, a place to benchmark how much heat the mash tun is going to pull out of that water initially. But, you know... It's important to realize, though, that the heat is making it out of the water into the mash tun initially. And that's where a lot of people go wrong in their mash temperature or strike temperature calculations. They do not account for the, the heat that will creep into the uh, mash vessel. And that is also true for igloo and Coleman uh, converted coolers. Um, there's insulation in the walls and it reacts in the same way. All right, so it's 155 degrees. I gave it a quick stir. All right, maybe 154. I think that would be more appropriate because it, it was just wavering between 155 and 154. Uh, at, at 66 minutes, uh, it hit 147. So I'm going to say that that's, that's where it ended at, you know, at the 65-minute mark for beer, beer tools calibration purposes. I hit uh, 147 degrees. So you can see that it's a much more conservative flame on the uh, choke down burner here. And I'm recirculating to uh, have it whirlpool. You can see I, I have a little bit of a, an air leak there, steam coming out. Um, I started the timer at 152 degrees and I'm going to measure how long it takes to uh, hit 170. And that'll just tell me how much effective VTU I'm getting into the mash tun with that burner running down. And the last thing I want to do while I've uh, already expended all the energy to heat this water up is to see what the heat loss is <clears throat> on a bear kettle. So.